I'm here with Marcus on the Siemens booth at China Utility Week. Marcus, you've spent the last four years working in China, heading up Siemens Energy Management Division. What's so different about the Chinese energy market? Well, first of all, there, there are four, let's say, four mega trends which are also happening in China. Right. The one thing is uh, the uh, renewables who are going into the energy system. Um, the second one is the interconnection on, on DC level mainly. Right. Then we have a lot of decentralization of the energy system. The third one, and the first one, the fourth one is digitalization. What is different in China is all of that is happening in a very massive way, very fast, and very on a very big scale. Um, and this morning we saw some of the presentations about what's going on with uh, state grid, southern grid. As you say, the scale is just mind blowing. Now, on your presentation this morning, you mentioned about um, the transmission systems. What I understand here is there's a lot more DC transmission here, and again at a huge scale. Yeah, what we're having here is basically, if you look on the last year's average, we're having around three, two, three, four projects on ultra high voltage DC. Yeah. And the size of this project, that's the main difference. I mean, we're talking here in China a lot of 800 kV DC, yeah. but then we're talking also about 1100 kV, which is, I think that's the only project in the world which comes to that, that, that voltage level. There, there's no other. So we're transmitting that 12 uh, gigawatt, and that scale, over 3,300 kilometers, that scale, it's only happening in China. It's driven by, by state grid, it's driven by innovation from state grid, and we are participating in that supporting them. Now, you also mentioned this morning in your presentation, in Europe, there's a, a huge amount of work being done joining all of the transmission systems, what NSOE is uh, representing with all the TSOs in Europe. That's starting now in China as well, outside China. Well, what, what you see is um, there, there are different uh, things on interconnection. Right? The one thing on interconnection is you're connecting the, the centers uh, where you generate the energy with the centers where you have the demand. That's in China typically. You have in the, uh, the western part or in the northern part, you have the, the wind power, and you're connecting it to the industrial centers on the eastern part. So that, that's one connection. The other connection, which is pretty much driven out of China, is also the interconnection, which goes over the borders of the country, so over national borders and even over continents. So there's an initiative from State Grid actually, um, which is called, uh, found by State Grid, it's called GuideCo. So it's a global energy interconnection. And we're exactly talking with them, us, uh, industrial suppliers in the energy world, banks, financing institutes, but also the, the transmission system operator. We're talking about how sh standards should look like that you can interconnect in the future to different grids of countries where it makes sense. So, so cars the bends yeah. roads been spreading out. Right, right, exactly. Now, where does decentralization play into this in China? So, well, if, it, if you have on the one hand side, you have these big centers of, of power generation, uh, might it be in the past coal or hydro, on the future other renewables like wind power, big solar plants. Uh, what you also have in parallel is a decentralization of the energy system. So we have a huge amount of uh, new producers also in China coming in. So we talk with China alone there's plan to uh, 200 gigawatt, 200 gigawatt of decentralized energy power resources. And that's in a lot of cases PV. Uh, it's in a lot of cases uh, smaller wind farms also, but it's also some gas engines, etc. It's also hydrogen, so 200 gigawatt coming in a decentralized energy system, which have to be integrated then, not on the transmission level, but on the distribution level, which is also a big challenge for the energy system. And that is then where the demand was for digitalization comes in. And one of the, the trends I just saw walking around here, we talk about moving to the cloud, and, and it is changing in Western Europe and North America. But everything here is cloud. Yeah. I, 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 there's no mention of non-cloud. Um, so I assume that plays into the whole digitalization strategies here. Yeah, sure. I mean, if, if you take that energy system of the past, which was pretty much an easy one, you have your power generation on the one hand side, transmission line, distribution to the consumer, might it be private households or industrial uh, facilities, or whomever traffic, right? That system is not existing anymore. When we talk about this decentralization, when we talk about renewables, which are not producing a constant power flow, we talk about the households of producing, which are not anymore only consumers, but prosumers, as we call it, industrial complexes, China, industrial parks, where we have big installations of PV, big installations of uh, gas engines supporting that. So all of these producers and consumers and new uh, participants, they have to be integrated into the system. 
And the only way to do that is actually by enhancing the system in, in terms of digitalization. So you have not only to automate it, but you have also to steer the data to create really an uh, on-time um, on time uh, overview on what is your demand, what is your load, what is your production to bring it together. And that is that is where digitalization comes in and that's why everybody's talking about cloud, because a lot of these data which you're generating, I mean they have to go somewhere to the cloud, but then you have also to create the right uh, applications for them. Because one thing is you have the data, which is nice, which is important, but what are you doing with the data? So that's the next question. So the applications you're running with the data you store somewhere in the cloud or on the server, that's then the question. Really create create some value for customer, for TSO, for DSO, for industrial uh, uh, manufacturer. Create a real use case and advantage for the day. And, and as you said at the start, the scale here is just phenomenal. That's right. The scale. The one thing is the scale. The other thing is the uh, the speed and the willingness to do something. I mean. We talk a lot about these plans which we are seeing, but you always can trust if there is a plan in China, it will also be executed. So it will happen. That, that, that is true. And the last thing, in Siemens recently you guys went through the whole uh, reorganization and aligning the business for growth. How does the smart infrastructure uh, Siemens alignment line up with China? So if you take what I, what I was saying before, if we take that part of decentralization, we take that part of uh, the energy, TV, rooftop, uh, industrial complexes, campuses, who are playing a much more important role inside of the distribution. They are part of the distribution in the, in the future because they are not only consuming like in the past, yep. but they are also producing. So they will become part of the distribution grid, of the smart grid. So that's where we're bringing buildings, campuses, industrial applications um, with the smart grid part of the energy and the distribution net together. So that, that, that's the idea of the smart infrastructure. So smart buildings, plus smart energy, is a smart grid. Well, the other way around, smart buildings plus smart grid is smart energy, however you want to take that. Uh, it's about breaking down the traditional silos, right. because that's the only right. way you're going to get, the, exactly. get all this to work. Wow. Hey, I wish you well. Thank you. Thanks I'm very, very excited. Thank you.